Hello, everybody. Welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 544 for May 8th, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Kelly. And I'm Adriel. It's just the two of us again. So, Kyle's Hello. doing baseball. Kyle is doing baseball. He's being a responsible dad, which mm-hmm. is awesome. I think that's great. Yeah, I think so. If, yeah. yeah, when your kids are that small, you need to be able to be able to be there for them. Because guess what? They grow up and then they become gamers and then they never want to see you again so <laughs> <laughs> the game in the basement yeah they become basement trolls and yeah then they yeah. move out and when they're 25 they move back in with their mother just saying okay wow have you seen the price of houses out there right I now know, right <laughs> so i said to my son no you can stay another year you can't move out yeah save all up. right good idea adriel what did you do in guns this week I did some stuff. Uh, I hit the range okay. uh, to test the WSMCR and then shoot the FN-49. Did I talk okay. about that? I got two shots out of the MCR. Yeah. And then the piston bent. Uh, yeah. Not good. But, but, okay. So I got home. Yeah. I took that piston out and I applied some strategic bending to it to make it straighter. Yeah. And then I changed the uppers because I have two uppers for my WSMCR. I changed to one that had a, a, a brand new one that has steel bushing in the top. And uh, then I, I took it to, well, I had a three gun match last weekend. So I yeah, took yeah. it, but I asked uh, uh, the guy who I'd borrowed that Raven from before. I'm like, yo, can you bring your Raven so I can shoot that thing? He's like, yeah, okay. So I, I used his Raven. Um, it, it ran good. So I, 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 I won the match. Yeah, the guy I who I, the guy who I beat, uh, he, he had some. Ca- it was his magazines, not his rifle, but he had some. He had some some rifle problems. One of his mags uh, had like a catastrophic jam on him, and mm. uh, it only messed him up on like a pretty hard stage. Um, this so th- uh, this was uh, four stages, um, lots of moving up and down range, which was cool. Uh, that was that was a, a really neat part of it. Um, lots of side to side stuff. And then one interesting thing at this, uh, match was we had some horizontal rifle spinner targets and a spinner target. Normally you have to use a a shotgun and you have to put a lot of power onto the, onto the plates to get them to spin properly with a shotgun at 10 meters. You can do it. No problem. Uh, with a rifle at 50, 60 meters, it's uh, it's challenging. So, uh, that was a, that was a pretty hard aspect of the match and one that ate uh, a lot of people's lunch at this match. No. Okay. And that was the one that, uh, that Jay had his, his jam on. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, without that, it would have been like, we would have been neck and neck. It would have been like real, real close, but yeah, it was, uh, so I, I, I won the match. Um, I had to shoot in tack ops cause I, <laughs> I shot with a scope, but, uh, I'd rather shoot with a red dot. Like it was, I had to get, you have to get the gun up. You have to get that perfect eye relief. You need like that, that cheek rest to, to look through the scope exactly. Whereas with the are. red dot, I can be slops. I can be total slops with the red dot and just shoot from, cause you're not shooting from the same position. You're not shooting from your like chest. You're not going prone and standing all the kind of stuff you're doing like through VTAX. You're shooting around stuff. Uh, you're bringing it up, firing a sh- couple shots, moving over. So, like the the ability for that red dot to get on target and uh, and start wailing away with the shots is way more important than the better uh, precision at like uh, you know medium dis- medium range. So, uh, I want to go back to the red dot. I want to go back. To the you want to go back to the red dot? So my registered. Like... I've applied for my restricted uh, registered. Uh, that gun right there. I want it. That's my Raven I'm pointing to for the audio listeners. Yeah. I want, to, I want to be able to take it to the range and sight it in, make sure it runs so I can, because I got a match in a month, a big match in a month. I'd rather use it than uh, any other firearm I, I have in this, in this place. Uh, yes. Yeah, so the match went well. Uh, cool. I, I you won. won. I won yeah. a certificate to what you, where? Spectre Ballistics. <gasps> really? 40% off anything they make. That's a oh. pretty big gift certificate 40 percent. awesome what are you getting well they make a bunch of like 1022s right yeah so, they do yeah 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 the whole rifle 
Yeah. So I'm just been trying to figure out uh, like uh, what I get because uh, they've got. Uh, let's see here. Where's their firearms? Non-restricted. You know what I think people. I think you know what I think we should do. Mm-hmm. We should get our, our listeners to send you what they think that you should buy. Ah, uh, yeah. Because so I got some of these, like this Apex match with the like the ch- complete chassis and a Magpul, <laughs> or I could get one like the Hogue Overmold. That's like yeah, which is a little nice. bit more plain. Yeah, it's nice though. I like that. This what blue red? I got a couple of blue guns already. Maybe or red guns. Maybe like a blue gun. Okay. Maybe I don't have anything a little bit more uh, obnoxious. Like they had purple and green at some point, but. Looks like now they're just back to, oh yeah, and they've got that uh, that rear charging handle receiver as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should get something with that. Is it for the whole mm-hmm. entire order? One item. Oh my, man. One, my one item could be a fifteen hundred dollar gun. And get forty yeah. percent off on it, right? Okay, you know what you really should do? You should go for the gun because you're never going to get that again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I was thinking think of so. it was for the order you could do like a do a combo deal. Yeah. But which yep. one? Which one? A 50 MOA receiver? <laughs> or I mean one of these ST22s. Match 12. That looks like that would work for steel challenge and that kind of thing. Tony has a suggestion for you. Uh-huh. He said to Astros, and if you can get uh, the not yet re- a release completed SBI 180s with the discount. Hmm. That's good. That's actually really good. Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> really good <clears throat> suggestion, <throat> Tony. Yeah. Okay. Anywho. Uh, yeah. So well, I got congrats a, on that. I got to, I got to, I'm, I'm, I'm jazzed about the, the gift certificate. That's, that's, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that. Hmm. That was random draw too, and like there, I was the first one drawn. I'm like, yeah, give me that. <laughs> there were two of them on the table. I'm like that one right there. <laughs> Didn't even have to think about it. No, not no. at all. No, mm. there was some other good ones. Like there was a fifty dollars gift certificate with uh, Tundra Supply and a couple other things on there, which oh, were also really good. good. But that forty percent off, oh, I can I can make that sing. I can make that yeah. work for me. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I ordered a shotgun and some primers from Tenda. Uh, the shotguns just like a Palk shotgun, a Churchill 612, yep. and the primers because I was doing the order anyways. Might as well, you know, get some small pistol primers and add to my ridiculous stockpile of nine millimeter. At this point, is a stockpile when when your your metal shelf has got like a bad bend in it. That's a that's a stockpile. Yeah, mm-hmm. is it just one of those basic aluminum shelves, or is it like? Steel, steel, steel wire. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> it says it holds three hundred pounds. I'm putting it to the test. Yes, yeah. that one shelf. Yeah, mm-hmm. at BTSA we don't get to pick. It's a signed prize and draw. I like the random. The random. Well, I, I'm biased yeah. here. I like random draw because that's what we've always done. Um, but I like it because it encourages people to stay and clean up. If you Correct. leave before the cleanup's done, you don't get a chance to win anything. And. Um, I like random draw because sometimes uh, someone who is like, maybe it's like their first match ever and they win something and it's like, wow, that's like that. That's uh, really cool. So I prefer random draw, not uh, assigned based on like rank and that kind of thing. And and it, once in a while, there's a <coughs> prize that's not the most expensive thing on the table that I want. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I'd rather pick it up than, you know, the, the absolute best thing. Some of the best matches that I've been at as, have the um volunteers they have a draw for the volunteers too mm-hmm. i think that's really cool it's, yeah it's it's really nice to i i i don't say you have to have it mm-hmm. um because volunteering a lot of times we volunteer just because we want to do it but it's always nice to have that too so but yeah go on up pick your prize i've been to matches where it has been your first place you get this prize because it's a sponsored prize right and they want to give it to whoever whoever is the first uh, place person or yeah so i really yeah. like hats so if it's- i think <laughs> yeah so for, for volunteers if you, want to, if you want to give them like a crack at a hat first i think that's a good idea yeah all volunteers get a hat yeah um, but then the prizes, like the good prizes, everyone gets, everyone gets a chance. I don't know. I, I think it's a really Tommy? good idea. 
that too commie of me? No. Anywho. No. What? Everybody? That's very socialist. <laughs> Normally you're very much a capitalist and Yeah. Yeah. But like I um if there are big prizes associated with ranking, it yeah. will make people act like jerks instead of act in instead of like competing for the sake of competing they're competing now to win something that's very that's like worth something so i would rather people compete on the for competition's sake than uh, uh compete for uh oh well yeah if i get first instead of second that means i get a thousand dollar prize instead of a 500 hundred dollar prize right that's now you're giving people a financial motivation to cheat or uh just act unethically so yeah there's that's been fun. a lot of discussion around that yeah, uh, I took part in one of those discussions last year, and mm-hmm. somebody who won first place had a pro- and received a prize. It was a sponsor's prize, and they took it and they so- sold it. And I'm going, okay, I can, I, but I also understand why sometimes people will sell it because if they are if they are a national ranked uh, shooter and they need the funds, they already have their guns, and they will actually sell. The prizes so that they can fund uh, their competitions however that also being said it's not something that i would do i morally i can't do it i can't sell a gun or a prize that i've been and i've won a couple of guns so i can't and they're still downstairs in my in my um I'm, safe I might, I might sell something i won i, I know you that. might <laughs> Sorry, capitalist comes back. <laughs> yeah. Buy low, sell high. Yeah. Well, some, sometimes I've I've won stuff where it's like, oh, I already have one of these, but uh, you know, now I guess I have two. And then, yeah. or um, there's been a couple of things where I won it and I used it and I didn't like it as much as yeah. the stuff I already had. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not just going to hang on to it. It's it's going to get sold. So, um, well, I think that's totally okay. If it's something that you've used and you're going, no, it's not for me. Go and sell it. Somebody else can use it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. I uh, put out a couple of videos. I put out a video on the Raven Builders Kit. Uh, I did one on gun ranges in Edmonton uh, based on Tony's recommendation. So I put the article out. And he's like, I'll put it on YouTube. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. So I, uh, I put that on YouTube. Uh, I did one. Finally, because one of my articles, uh, one of my older articles on getting started in three gun in Canada is uh, outdated. It's like, oh, buy an AR. And uh, <laughs> I kind of think it's like, oh, well, no Good. more. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, we so have I... to update that. That didn't age well, did it? No. 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 Okay. That's been an evolving thing because from my first article on three gun to my, I've actually updated that thing four times and like given, given different recommendations. Uh, the shotgun market changed, like the original semi-auto shotguns that I recommended um, 10 years ago uh, yeah. have changed. And uh, some of the pistols have changed. And yeah, significant. now uh, you can't get a pistol. So maybe PCC and your shotguns. Okay, well, there's that. and Yada, yada, yada. Lots of different stuff on there. Uh, and then so I, I, I posted a, a photo of this online. Yeah, uh, I saw that too. Yeah, this is uh, my blackout barrel came in. Uh, John sent it to me. So I popped that guy on there. Oh, the length is perfect for it. Oh, it's so perfect. No muzzle device, just a thread protector and 26 inch, 26.5 inch OAL. It's perfect because you need 26 inches and I've got 26.5. And, uh, acceptable barrel length for 300 blackout so 10 10 and a half inches is is you can actually do something with that in 300 blackout and the nice thing about this yes it's nice and small but you can actually put it to like you can put the stock to a reasonable length so that you can actually shoot the thing uh which i think is good i put like a little hand grip because this crappy old uh four end i have is key mod and i have a couple of cheap key mod accessories so i put them on there i got like a hand stop on there like a kind of like a foregrip. Uh, I put a push button QD there, push button QD there, which means that this thing sits very nicely on your chest, completely out of the way. It's so small and easy to uh, uh, to sling up with. Mm-hmm. And uh, now I gotta go shoot it. Yeah, Not you know. it, so I can take this thing to the range and and shoot it. So I have a mag of uh, some police pickups some police 300 blackout and some reloaded 300 blackout in there. Hmm, Just to try spicy. it out. 
I I might make a couple of extra rounds because I've also got some uh, all copper blackout uh, rounds, and it's uh, so and they, they open up the pedals on it, and I think yeah. the someone was telling me that eight point six blackout. Uh, with a one in three twist, was that one of our guests? That was one of our guests. Yes, just uh, recently here. Uh, that was last week. Yeah. yeah, he was saying that eight point six with a tight twist, like really spins in there. I don't know what the twist is on this three hundred blackout barrel is, but anyways, I'm gonna get some copper bullets, or I have copper bullets for it, so I need to do that. Tony's saying, please paint it white. Um, I am going to rattle can this with the cheapest, shittiest <laughs> Krylon possible. And that's going to be my uh, my paint to the white. There's stuff that all this other stuff like this and this were actually Cerakoted uh, like eight or nine years ago as part of like an AR build. I have a white uh, up, upper and lower for my AR that uh, also matches. It's it. been longer than that. Probably. It's been longer Probably. than that. The before times before COVID, it's like everyone underestimates <laughs> how long it's been. BCB. No, BCC. B before COVID. B before COVID. Yeah, before COVID. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is should be good. I I took photos of it with my five forty mag on there because it's ridiculous. <laughs> but realistically, what I'm going to be doing when I hunt with it because it's manually actuated is hunt with these little ten rounders. Yeah, this is uh just a ten round mag, and uh, it's nice and compact, and it doesn't stick out of the gun that much, and it, it keeps with the the uber compact uh memeness of it. yeah 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 actually on facebook when I, so I posted this on the hunting gear guy facebook page and some of the other guys who have built similar rifles uh posted theirs and there's some pretty good good looking stuff really some guys yeah some guys were running that. uh 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 pig guns like hog guns yep. like this because that's small that's like you can chuck that in a quad or whatever and then if you get to get on a hog take it out with a with a nice teeny tiny gun I'm so happy that the muzzle worked out because I didn't want a I didn't want to break or anything on this thing because I'm probably going to shoot it while hunting. So I need, yeah. you know, no break. Don't want the the loudness. So no. Yeah. Oh, just the orange parts. These are actually kind of reddish. I guess I can paint those too. Oh, they look. Oh, just just... Of the... Yeah, they're red, but he doesn't want you shiny. to paint the receiver. I'm going to paint everything, Tony. I'm not even going to mask things off. You'll be lucky if I take the red, the the optic off, and then it's it's all getting a coat. It's one big thick coat. That's how you're supposed to do it, right? Not even a, multiple coats. I don't know. So yeah, I'll 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 paint it. I like the white paint because a lot of times when I'm hunting in the winter, uh, in November there's snow on the ground. So yep, pure white gun doesn't uh, doesn't look off. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I need to reload some more 300 blackout, uh, this weekend. I got a busy weekend this weekend. Uh, Yay. Maple Seed on Saturday. It's going to be at Chaz. Uh, that's west of the city, and I'm going to go home. And then Sunday, I'm going to drive the other way and do a pal course at Sherwood Park. So, yeah. uh, a, a pretty busy one coming up. Uh, and, uh, I think I like it. I mentioned in the last, uh, the last call. Uh, I'm going to be doing PAL courses every weekend for a Ever? while. Mid-June? Mid-June somewhere. That's when Forever. That's when I won't be uh, won't be doing any PAL courses. Yeah. Um, but then I'm doing other stuff. Then I have, mm -hmm. oh, I'm stopping briefly so I can do that two-day three-gun match. And uh, I don't know. Question. Are they going to do mm -hmm. Prairie Fire this year? Uh, I don't know. I didn't Are go last go? year. No, no, I know you didn't. Um, I won't be able to because I guarantee I've got something else going. I, I, my my schedule is is toast until September. I packed it. I packed like it's it's like thirty percent maple seed, thirty percent three gun, thirty percent pal courses. <laughs> well, there you go. You're doing stuff for yourself. You're shooting for yourself too. Yeah, That's awesome. yeah. Good for some you. Those in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to. Yeah. Trying to mix it up, get them all in there, uh, and then oh, the the long weekends are are reserved for family, right? To to go camping and that kind of thing. I never I never do a pal course or a maple syrup or anything like that on a on a long weekend. Otherwise, are you doing something this weekend? Sorry for your wife because it's Mother's Day, Sunday. Uh, I am. Leaving Did you her remember alone with that? Kids. I remembered. <laughs> I remembered. I'm leaving her alone with the kids. <laughs> 
go and buy her something nice. I'll be out volunteering and then, uh, you know, bringing home the bacon with the pal. <laughs> All right. Bring her something nice. Yeah. My tired ass uh, <laughs> at the end of the day. And I'm going to just like lay around the house. I think that's what I'm going to bring her. Okay. That's what you do on that's appropriate for Mother's Day, right? Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> yes. I'll go get her some flowers tomorrow, maybe. And then that's, that's it. Good idea. Like, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> what about right. you? I, this past week, I did not get to the range, but I planned a couple of dates to get to the range. So that's going to be fun. I paid my membership fee for FRPC. I chatted with uh, one of our uh, Maple Seed friends that we have not had a Maple Seed at in the past few years. It was really good to reconnect with them. So we had a long chat. So we're going to be doing a Maple Seed potentially at Napanee Gun Ranch, which is awesome because it's right down the road and I get mm -hmm. to sleep in my bed uh, on the that evening. But I also get to go to it was it's one of my old ranges that I belong to. Um, yeah, really good people there. So it was really nice to reconnect with them. So I'm paid up for my memberships. I am. I'm I specifically am planning some maple seed dates now that uh, the other ship buses in Ontario have confirmed a few more dates. And so I'm just filling up the rest of my calendar with that. Uh, on Monday, which was a new weird date for this. Um, yeah, Monday. I did the She Shoots podcast. We had Tracy Wilson on and she was talking about National Range Day. It aired yesterday, but it was pre-recorded from Monday. So I would like everybody to go and visit uh, the uh, Canadian University Shooting Federation or Lady Guns YouTube page. And go and look up yesterday's, um, yeah, yeah, or go and listen to it on the podcast, where you can listen to this on the podcast. So if you're listening to this, then you can, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm also going to be doing the club level ATT handgun course. Uh, I was talking with Henri, who I'm going to be doing that with today, and just confirmed everything. I'm bringing a couple of my pistols, you know, and. Tomorrow night, we're meeting with the Gunny Girl calendar crew, and we're going to look at the selection process, I believe. You don't need a selection process. You got one a winner. You got one winner in the I know. We have already. I, yeah. I've sent that to everybody, and I said, this needs to go on our calendar cover. I've picked the 2024, or sorry, 2025 calendar cover model. Calendar Girl is Adriel Michaud. In his onesie. Yeah, had to better than than the women, even at uh, the Gunny Girl calendar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate to tell no? you, Adriel, they weren't biting. <laughs> <laughs> I do not believe you. Oh darn it! Oh, it will well. be. Thank you for applying. You will not be advancing in the selection <laughs> process. You could be meaner than that. That'd be way funnier. Uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're quite nice, oh. <clears throat> but we only have 13 spots. We have, you should do like a, a Simon uh, Powell, uh, level, like beat down of it, of like, Oh, that's red, horrible. red buzzer moment. Eh. No, that's horrible. It's just me. You can do it for mine. Oh, not you? The, yeah. The okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not the other oh. one. It's just mine. I'll send you a personally. I'll, I'll write it personally for you and send it. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <coughs> I'm still sick as a dog, but yeah, that's about it. I haven't done much working my butt off. Okay, so let's get into things that are happening, new events, you know, that old stuff. Uh, let's see. I can, I can read the events, events off. I've Why got half do... of them at least. Yeah, you do. Three gun, you're up. <clears throat> sure, Park multi gun, uh, May 11th. That's this weekend. Mighty Peace, three gun. This weekend, uh, Niagara Regional Sportsman's Three Gun, also this weekend. So, uh, Three Gun everywhere this weekend. There'll be a Chaz Three Gun match on June 1st. Uh, there will be a multi gun match uh, June 7th at Guelph. That's the Guelph Rod and Gun Club. Uh, CDTSA, that's Milo. They're going to have one on the 9th. Uh, why 7th? Why would that be? 
I see this Canadian multi-gun series for Guelph is the 7th of June, but that doesn't make any sense. That's a Friday. Uh, that might be the day after. I don't know. Uh, and then the Sherwood Park uh, Fish and Game multi-gun team match is on the 15th. And that one, I think there's still spots available for that one. So if you've been on the fence, uh, register even if you don't have a team. And they will put you on a team. Next up is uh, Maple Seed. Uh, yep. There's a couple of events that are coming up for that that still have spots. And I have, as of today, updated the events that are uh, up Thank on you. the website. So... Uh, we sent out an email recently, too. So if you got the email, you're good. Uh, if you didn't get the email, uh, go to mapleseedrifleman.com slash events or just mapleseedrifleman, yeah. like Google it and find the events listing. Uh, Chaz, this weekend, still got spots available. At this point, really? if you re if you register, you may get very personalized instruction. You may get a platinum maple seed experience with the level of attention you will receive at this event. Next one after that. So that's this weekend, May 11th, uh, May 26th at Lone Butte, BC. That one's still got spots open. Uh, AMA uh, in Nova Scotia, May 31st. That one's still with range members. That one will open to the public soon. So if you're in Nova Scotia, that, take a look at that one. Uh, Peace River is June 8th, and Kananaskis is also June 8th and 9th. Uh, Armstrong, BC, June 9th. Elmira Rod and Gun Club in Ontario, June 9th. That one's already sold out. And that's 30 days. That's enough. Uh, if you want to take a look at any of the other ones, head over to maplecedrifleman.com. HGG firearms training. I'm sold out until July. So if you want to, if you want to get a, a firearms license in July, or if you have a friend or family in the Edmonton area who you think should get their uh, PAL license, like a youth 12 to 17, or your significant other, uh, take a look on my website, huntinggearguy.com, and then follow the link for the PAL courses in Edmonton. And I got a schedule up there with whichever dates have availability. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. We're flogging your, your extra. I, I, uh, Kelly, if you called me a shill, it wouldn't <laughs> hurt me. It, it would, it would warm my heart <laughs> to know that I'm taking advantage of every opportunity in front of me. <laughs> well, I think that again, capitalism, um, that's everything that we love about you, Adriel. So I did want did to talk know to, did, Go did ahead. you know that, that that 2023 had the most people get their PAL course of any other year in Canada? Yes. And you know why that was? Me. Correct. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's because of uh, C21. People were not able to get their handguns. So our population has increased. So we're no longer 2.3 million gun owners in Canada. We're 2.4 million uh, mm -hmm. that have also acquired. So 100,000 have acquired their uh, PAL license and our PALs in recent years. And it's quite frankly, thank you to the Liberal government for doing it because you're increasing this exponentially. It was 80, 88,000 people in one year. Okay. Well, eight. That was 20, I rounded up. I uh, you said you said in the last couple of years that's accurate. I'm just like hmm. adding extra detail. Okay. Yeah. Last year, eighty eight. <laughs> last 88, year, Yeah, eighty eight thousand last year. Twenty eight thousand year before that. Thirty nine thousand year before that. So in Negative two years, twenty twenty. Like some people died. Too many people died. Not enough COVID. people got licensed because this is net, no. right? No, it's so COVID. It's, it's, COVID? Everything was shut Did down COVID in COVID. Kill that many people? No, minus. people. They weren't running PAL courses, right? And it's minus. So, like, this is like, I, I don't know. I don't know what the amount of because this is all net. This is a net change. I don't know how many PAL owners die every year, but it must be, well, some like maybe minus twenty thousand, minus thirty thousand, something like that. Twenty or thirty thousand PAL owners must die each year. So this 80,000 is probably like the amount of people who are actually licensed was probably like well over 100,000. Because that's that you have to add on the people who died in there as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's allowed to die. Okay. Truly. You're not allowed to die. We have to keep our numbers up. Um, yeah, we were talking about what that a, the other what day. A sausage fest. 85% male, 15% female. Total sausage fest, Yukon. Twenty eight percent. Working on it. Well, the, like you're exceeding in the Yukon and none of it and that kind of thing. Places where they know they need to have a gun. Yeah. More likely for females to have a gun. I'd like uh, to see what the trend is. 
Do you have the P. trend I. for? Do you have a trend for over the years? Females uh, versus males. This is total. I don't have a trend for. And this is uh, gun the gunblog.ca. Their facts and stats uh, page. They've got quite a bit on here. Uh, it looks like a sausage fest everywhere. PI is the worst for the sausage fest. They're 91% male, 9% female. Alberta, 16%. Ontario, 15%. PI, no females getting guns there. <coughs> UConn leading at 28%. <clears throat> Anyways, interesting. Okay. Well, thanks for actually doing that. I know that there was another hearing this week, and it was in Campbellford, but that's the reason why Tracy Wilson had to record early. Um, so I wonder what happened to that. I wonder if the bylaw passed or if they were able to knock that out. You know what it really should do? It was streaming live. Was it? Yeah. Did we I get an update? It. No, shoot. Uh, watching a municipal uh, town council meeting is... Uh, not my idea of fun, regardless of the topic. <clears throat> All right. Well, I'll get an update from Tracy again. Sorry about coughing. Mm -hmm. um, but why don't we get into the new gun stuff? And while you're talking about some of this other stuff, I'm going to get an update if I can. So, uh, need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud sponsor of the CCFR with a wide selection of guns and top trending gear for any shooter. They have free shipping over $250. Some exclusions apply. They now have a $17 flat rate shipping for orders below the $250. Subscribe. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Subscribe to the weekly newsletter to get the first access to the hottest deals. So why don't you bring us into the loop on what's new in guns? And I'll ask Tracy about that. Yeah, you bet. So there's a couple of things that they've got uh, that are interesting. So their their sales are ending today, right? They, they, that's their cycle. Um, so taking a look at what they've got, Norica Air Rifles, 40% off. That ends tonight. 10% off Blades, 10% off Savage Rifles and Mags. Uh, and... No, that's all of them. That's all of them that, uh, that are on sale tonight. So Norica Air Rifles. Ooh. Ooh, those are quite a bit off. So they're kind of like break in the middle, break style uh, 177. 755 FPS? Oh, you can get a non-restricted. Oh, 820 FPS, 22 cal? Oh, that would kill the hell out of a grouse or whatever you're shooting with it. Hmm, that's interesting. And it's cheap too. Okay, so the Norica Dragon Air Rifle, 22 cal, 820 FPS, 150 bucks. That is decent. So you'll need your pal for that one. Anything over 500 FPS, you got to have your pal. Uh huh. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, you, could, you could use this to kill something. 2.9 kg, not very heavy. Just under six pounds, or six pounds, probably bang on there. Hmm. Hmm. You should buy one of those, Kelly. You should roll down there and get one of those things. Just roll on down. Just roll on down. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff here. Uh, Range View's got a sale, and uh, they got a couple of different things. They got some federal premium 7mm uh, PRC ammo. If you're in that People's Republic Army of China, I guess that's that's good for you. But uh, there's all, they've also got the SM. That's a joke, by the way. It's PRC. It's like a cartridge. Uh, just in case anyone thinks I don't know what it is. The, the more interesting thing for me, they got uh, SNB 308 precision rifle ammo. It's got 175 grain. Hollow point boat boat tail round, twenty rounds for thirty two ninety nine uh, for match ammo, thirty bucks for a box of match ammo. It's good. That's a good price. I would look at getting one of those. Yep. Uh, the next thing SFRC has the Churchill six twelve pump action shotguns on sale. So they got a couple of different kinds there. They've got the shockwave one that comes with this pistol grip and <laughs> quote unquote holster, uh, as well as the full length stock. If you actually want to shoot the thing and, and hit what you're aiming at, uh, they got that too. So they've they've got the party version or the practical version, whichever practical. one you want. Yep. Uh, Calgary Shooting Center has uh, restocked on their M Carbo stuff, and M Carbo's they've got a couple of other interesting products that they have right now. 
Uh, they have a KSG shell reflector, deflector, sorry. I don't know how we can reflect, but it deflects. Uh, they got a firearm feed ramp polishing kit if you need that kind of thing. And then they got some more practical things like the Savage Axis trigger kit and uh, flat trigger for the Ruger PC carbine. I actually have quite a few things for the Ruger PC carbine. Uh, a couple things for the Sig Sauer P320 and so on and so forth. So if you're looking for like a, a, a trigger or a spring kit to make your trigger a little bit lighter, uh, they've got them. Gotenda has the meme mag. Uh, this is the 30 round drum magazine uh, for your Turkish pump action shotguns. It's $200. Really? But it fits more than a box of shotgun shells in the mag. Now, if you were a gamer, you might take one of those bullpup semi-autos and modify it as such so that it could fit one of these magazines unmodified. These magazines are made for pump actions. Perhaps you could modify a bullpup to fit one of these things, perhaps. And perhaps you could use it at three-gun matches to perhaps. utterly dominate uh, rounds <laughs> that uh, stages that maybe need more of a, a shotgun approach to it. Perhaps. Perhaps. You would never need to reload it. 30, 30 rounds is good for a whole stage. <laughs> there true. aren't stages where you need more than 30 rounds. Unless true. you, you know, start dumping some rounds out of it because it doesn't want to run. Um, I think TNA reduced the price even more on their primers. Okay. There's their Cam Pro small pistol primers, 5,000 for total, 325. This is $65 per thousand primers. This has to be the cheapest that these have been. These are, at, at one point, these were like $85 per thousand, but $65, that's got to be the lowest price. It's 5,000 of them, though. You got to buy a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Buy four, four boxes of 1,000 primers, get 1,000 free. Or alternatively, you could think about it as buy 5,000 and get them for 65. Tony says, bullpup, where are you going to put your arm? Okay, Tony, uh, I'm going to uh, put this on me for a second. Uh, you got to hold it like this. You gotta kind of shoot it like that. <laughs> you got short arms. It's, it, that that is what it looks like, uh, supposedly. Supposedly, that's what it, that's what it would look like if you had to do such a thing. True. Uh, that's uh, is that that's it? all I could find. That's all I could find. Cool. Yeah. All right. So we have no main topics tonight, but we do have actually have a little bit of a main topic. Do you want to tell everybody that we've been thinking about doing? Uh, we are looking for another co-host, someone you who bet. can, uh, show up on Wednesday nights and chat with us about guns and, uh, not say, um, too many times like me or me, um, or actually, always. or always anyways. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> if you can, if you have some weird colloquialisms, that's great. Kettle of yes. fish, that kind of thing. Yeah. Ke those, those would fit in fine. Yes, they would. Uh, yeah yeah but anyways yeah if you're interested in uh in co-hosting with us uh email us sci-fi radio at gmail.com we'd be happy to uh, we should do it like last time where we get like people to like come on, come on. and like do a do a show yeah yeah yeah. suggest a topic mm -hmm. kind of co-host but or ah. lead yeah yeah so yeah. what we're looking for you is to send us an email say that you're interested um uh, suggest a topic and we'll have you on and you can call, you can actually be the lead host <laughs> for the night and then we'll we'll make a decision how long do we want to keep this open for till we get it right excellent okay <laughs> that's uh ambiguous uh Very. on purpose yeah yes that's that's not actually me like standing by some level of quality or something it's just me being ambiguous do you We'd think love we should to... have a timeline no, I think we, yeah, like we that. would like to hear from everybody as soon as possible because we would love to have another co-host with us. Yeah, we're really missing. We're really missing some of our other co-hosts. And so when things happen, life happens, whether it's, you know, baseball or leaving the show because you no longer love your other co-hosts. Um, <laughs> things happen. So we would love to have another person on, at least one or two, so that we can have uh, discussions and a fulsome discussions about new and some product. different perspectives, right? Because exactly, uh, when you came on, you were coming off of New Shooter Canada, and I would say you're not a new shooter anymore. 
that was a while ago. <laughs> it's, yeah, been a, yeah. it's been a year or two. And yeah, female. It, yeah. I'm still female. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the 15%. Right Ooh. here. <laughs> Representing. Yeah. Oh, you know who I saw recently uh, speaking about female representation? Uh, Amanda was on CTV talking about uh, uh, <clears throat> Ipsic and uh, the fact that handguns are frozen and, and all that other kind of stuff. It was great. Um, I should post it on somewhere instead of just talking about it now that I realize it. Sometimes I share things and I don't think about it. <sighs> Let me just grab it and throw it into the feed because it was a really good watch. And uh, I didn't have time to yep. watch it. You did share it with B us, so BTSA made an appearance in there. Uh, <laughs> one of the okay, they talked to one guy. He's like, "This isn't going to do anything." C twenty one is not doing. I'm not going to do anything. And they talked to another guy. And he's like, "Well, it might do something." And they're like, "Would it prevent like a criminal from like using a gun?" He's like, "Well, no, ob obviously not." <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, maybe it'll work i don't know how it's gonna work but maybe <laughs> yeah it? it was the uh, very funny uh watching it and, and seeing the like very obvious fact-based approach and then the opposite side was just i don't know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe will it stop this well no it won't stop this we'll stop no it's not gonna no. stop that we need time to examine the impact well actually firearms crime is going up so what are you examining right now they're, they you can't it's it's i would argue that um not a lot of people realize this but firearms laws have very little impact on firearms homicides like very little there's other factors that are way more important yes what's happening in the drug trade what's happening with gangs or or that kind of thing how disaffected people like the employment uh, uh prospects in an area like all this economic stuff, oh yeah all, yeah all this stuff is just so so much more influential than firearms law that you can't even look at a, a time difference you can't say okay we introduced this law when was c21 i mean the freeze happened by oic in what 2020 2021 2020 2020 so this freeze happened what's happened since then well firearms homicides have gone up Mm -hmm. but the law went in yeah but what else happened okay well there was this covid thing now there's this fentanyl thing going on there's addiction there's this all the, all the other problems that just like make it so that that firearm law is meaningless insignificant in impact so you're not going to see an impact like our, our firearms crime was probably due to go up regardless what laws were in place just based on what's happening in society uh but it's also to say that those firearms laws are almost completely worthless. The ones that the ones that have been studied to have impact are like the basic, real basic ones, licensing and the ability to take guns away from people who are nuts. Okay. You need those two things. Those two things are important. And 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 they, they have studied that. Oh, yeah. When we have these things, we can we can stop some some homicides from happening. And guess what? We have those. We, we have, have those things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the like ban ban only this particular one because it's uh it's got this name, all that kind of stuff is like completely worthless. Completely worthless. Anywho, um I don't even know how I got into this tangent. Pull me out of here, Kelly. What do we do? Where are we going? <laughs> we went down a rabbit hole. I don't even know how you got there. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the main topic. We talked about asking for a co-host. Oh, I was talking about Amanda's video. That's where yes. I was going. Yes, you were going to share it. And you, did you even share it? Yeah, I, I put it on our Facebook page there. Oh, perfect. Just in the comments. It's in the comments there. Cool. Can we yeah. share Canadian news still? Uh, this is YouTube. So you can share a link to YouTube for, for oh, anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's good. I'll share it yeah. around too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's it. We just want to know who wants to be one of our hosts. Come and join us. Uh, you have a couple of couple of things you need to have a sense of humor mm -hmm. <laughs> did you really have to think about that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so you have to have a sense of humor and yeah just be available on wednesdays and come with a uh, fresh perspective indeed that's it okay so that's it for the main topic 
not really a main topic, but it is. So we're doing a we're doing a quick one tonight. Yeah, we are. Listener feedback, Facebook emails, none of those. Yeah. Oh, YouTube, YouTube. Kyle's <laughs> sorry. Adriel's going to do that live. Kyle's not here. I can I can do this. This is something I can do. I am capable. While you're looking that up, Russ did indicate that a lady who owns a local gun store, she started celebrating 10 years in business. Was, and just this week, she was asked on Facebook if people had names for their favorite guns. What about the hosts? Do you have names for your guns? Absolutely not. No. I know a lot of people There's who too do. many of them. That'd be like, you know, those families in the, in the 30s, that kind of thing that had like 20 kids. I'd forget names all the time. And those would be kids. These are like guns that sometimes I shoot and sometimes I don't. Right. I know a lot of people who have names for the guns. Mm -hmm. I I don't. And typically when you name a gun, it's a female name. Mm -hmm. But I don't I don't name mine. I have mm -hmm. certain guns that are my favorite, but they don't have names. Mine don't either. Nope. Uh okay. Comments. YouTube. Eddie's saying 8.6 blackout uh, at 500 meters would probably mean death from above since the bullet would be almost coming in vertically. Yeah, got that rainbow. Mm -hmm. Regarding 8.6 blackout being a 338 and a chopped down 308 case, I would prefer it to be in a full size case. That is 338 federal. Mm -hmm. uh, Kelly, Idaho is due south of Alberta and the Rocky Mountains run across most of it. I would really? be wrong. But I believe most of Idaho would be mountain terrain, except the southwest corner. Well, where do they grow all the potatoes? <laughs> those are mountain. Those are hill potatoes. Grow up on the mountain. I don't know. My God, I'm so generalized. <laughs> Idaho. All I think of is potatoes. Oh, my God. They have mountains. I just looked it up. <laughs> There's 50 <laughs> states. We can't be expected to know all of them. If you ask someone from America, what do you know about Saskatchewan? 90% of them wouldn't know a thing. Saskatchewan, that's a funny name. Yeah, yeah. What's the capital of Canada? Toronto. Mm, Toronto, yeah. That's, that's easy. Look, that's an easy Oh one. my God, they have mountains everywhere. And skiing. I'm such an idiot. What is Idaho best now? Hey, what is Idaho best no known for? Potatoes, trout, and, and precious stones. There's no mountain in there. And rugged landscapes. Okay. Rugged potato that. landscapes. <laughs> yes, I have to go to Idaho. I have to cross it off my list. It's one state I have not gone to. I think Obviously. I've gone it, but, I, but I forgot about it. I've never gone through it. Obviously. <clears throat> okay. Okay. That's it. That's, that's that's it for that. Well, thanks one. for your feedback. Uh, People buying stuff from Cabell's like, yeah, we'll do that one of these days. It's back okay. up. It's working again. It's working again. I didn't add the Cabell's link to our website, though, because I forgot. I'll go put it back up there. Okay. We're back on that affiliate network, so we can start doing that again. So if you do want to go and buy something from Cabela's or Brownells, just go to our website. You can click on the link and support the show and those that do thank you very much we'll take the stuff that you're purchasing from cabela's and we'll review it on a regular basis and give you some of our feedback sometimes it's nice feedback and some of it not so nice well it's always nice that's, that we should sell some more merch he's saying nice shirt i think he's talking about yours huh? <laughs> <laughs> slam fire he's... radio hawaiian shirts mm. I, now that's a shirt I would wear. I think we should actually do that. You are wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I like wear this. I wore this for work. I'm not. I, I don't put this on for for the show. This is what I <coughs> wore for work today. I'm on client calls and uh, I, I internal meetings, and this is this is what I'm wearing. I'm Funny how the... Hawaiian shirts when it's post COVID are not blue shirts at all, right? I wore them before the Boogaloo thing, too. Then the Boogaloo thing happened. I was like, okay, well, there's, you know, a bunch of uh, LARPers wearing this thing, too. And, uh, but now it's all over. So I can, I can wear these things again. Apparently, there's a nod to the Boogaloo boys in the movie The Civil War. They, yeah. they play a part. There's some, there's some Hawaiian shirt wearing 
tactical guys. You know what? I think that's a really good idea. Why don't we go in? Why don't you do a, one of whatever you do with <coughs> your merchandising and just take our logo and do it as a. It's it might be hard to find a good shirt and one of the merchandise. What I might do instead is buy a bunch of these shirts and then bring them to a place to get embroidered and just embroider the Slamfire Radio logo on it because it's two colors, three colors. Just embroider it on, right? All over it? No, no, no. Just like one, like just right here. Boop, boop. No, we're we want we want Hawaiian shirts with the Slamfire logo. There's a way. Okay, so hmm. Hmm. I've seen like camo patterns done with like weird things that aren't camo, but you like you make it. Do you into mean the like camo? the new camo pattern, Cat Pat, with oh, the moose on logo. it? That logo. That <laughs> logo. For the listeners who don't know what we're talking about, the Canadian Army released an alternative logo. They clarified afterwards, but their alternative logo was some real bad pixel art. <laughs> real bad pixel well, art. Well, it's pixel art with a moose, and then it also has. A Canadian maple leaf or maple leaf in the back. Yeah, so maybe you could do a pattern with, with like guns on it and stuff. Hmm. We should talk about that, Tony. If you know how to do make this magic happen, you gotta let us know because I don't know. This is beyond my capability as a as a marketer. I can I can do digital stuff, but printing stuff uh, not my strong suit. As uh, uh, Kelly will attest to from our uh, our t shirt misadventures the last time I tried doing this. Yes, the hats were fine, but I didn't do those. Kyle did those. <laughs> but Hawaiian shirts, Slamfire Hawaiian shirts. I'd yeah, I'd be yeah. all over that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. figure it out. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, Ray, you thanks for the going? suggestion. You keep going? Uh, we're into the shoutouts because we've already talked about email uh, sending an email. An email. Slamfire at gmail .com. Yeah, people are going to email the show for. Yeah. You know coming on the show so yeah all right thank you to our supporters on uh, patreon as well as player go on over there and have a look um but yeah why don't we get in the shout outs do you have a shout out oh yeah uh so taylor won pcc nationals of course yeah i say of course like um it was tight on some stages between him and franklin which shout out to franklin too but uh yeah. like taylor's very consistently doing really well in those stages he had a couple of jams I, I saw he posted this whole match video to youtube which i really like because i like to see uh the real time speed of the best shooters and what it takes and uh he's he's, he's fast he's, very, he's fast. very fast yeah yeah so go on youtube find his uh find his video and watch what it takes to take number one at the ipsic pcc nationals Okay. All right. How about you? You? Anything? No. Nah, no. Well, yeah. thanks to Tracy for coming on. Uh, she shoots, you know, the show that I cheat on with you guys with. But she didn't get back to me, so she's busy. So I'll We're let you guys a, know. a poly podcast relationship, I'd say. We're in a very poly podcast relationship. Okay. Anyways, everybody... Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Go to our Discord and chat with us. I'm not there. Adriel is. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, go check us out on YouTube. Go join the CCFR. And yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Later, everyone.